Senator Enhoff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I get the impression they don't like you. <laughs> At least one. <laughs> Well, anyway, you've been doing a great job. I do have something for the record I wanted to uh, put in, Mr. Chairman, and that is the, it's an article out of the Oklahoman that talks about the, all the, the, the improvements in the economy that are coming with getting rid of some of these very punitive regulations that we've been going through. I want to ask for consent. This be a, made a part of the record. Without objection. The, uh, you know, Mr. I Chairman, ask you to consent to, uh, to uh, insert for the record uh, a, a report from uh, Moody's, which suggests uh, something uh, a bit different. Thank you. Without objection. Okay, the, uh, uh, I walked in just the tail end of somebody else's, who's not here now, uh, inquisitions of, of you, and talking about the, the regulations. You know, I remember so well, because I was uh, all during the Obama administration, I was either the chairman or the ranking member of this committee, and the guy sitting right behind you, and I used to uh, look at the, what was happening to our economy, uh, was, which is in the process of being re reversed right now. But uh, he was implying that some of the, the poorest, the more most vulnerable people are the ones who are being... Uh, uh, that we're trying somehow, or you're trying somehow, to, to punish. And I want to just remind you that we had a guy, I remember so well, Harry Alfred, he, he was the president of the National Black Chamber of Commerce. He provided some of the most powerful testimony that I've uh, ever heard when it comes to the effects of the Clean Power Plan and some of the other regulations, but he was referring specifically to that, would have on the black and Hispanic uh, uh, poverty, including job losses and increased energy costs, and when it comes to regulations that you've been quoted uh, as saying, and who benefits? The elites, the folks who can least afford those kind of decisions pay the most. So I'd ask you, the, how is the EPA working to ensure that the most vulnerable communities are being considered and that the agency's cost-benefit calculations are accurately portraying realities on the ground? Well, Senator, good morning to you. And uh, I think your question goes to the heart of uh, cost of electricity, largely, and our power grid. And there are issues around that that obviously go to cost. Uh, we can't consider cost in our NAX program, but we can these other uh, provisions that impact the, the, the cost of electricity. So we uh, endeavor to make sure that our cost-benefit analysis is considered of those things and to make sure that we're making informed decisions as we finalize our rules. Yeah. Well, he was very emphatic as to the who is paying the price on these, and I think sometimes that previous administration forgot that those individuals, there are people out there are paying all they can pay just to try to keep, try to eat and keep their house warm. And that was, uh, that was one of the things that we have observed. I was happy to see that you entered the practice of sue and settle. Uh, Oklahoma has been on the wrong end of this tactic used by the Obama administration, which was nothing more than a way to create regulations behind closed doors without public input or even input from affected parties. Can you explain more about how you see this being a positive environmental outcome? Yeah, the, the sue and settle practice I mentioned in my opening comment, uh, Senator, uh, with respect to regulation through litigation, it's something that's not unique to the EPA. It, it's something that's happened at other federal agencies. Justice is also uh, involved in a, a, a reform effort there. But I think what's important uh, to note that as we engage in regulation, uh, regulation is intended to be law, there's intended to be laws of general applicability. And when you go into a, a litigation and you negotiate a consent decree with one party that affects others, uh, that, that's not transparency and also, it's also not, I think, fundamental to the APA and, and the open process to rulemaking. So that, that was the motivation in addressing the sue and settle uh, phenomena, the regulation through litigation, uh, and we've stopped that at the agency. Uh, that doesn't mean that we won't ever enter, enter into consent decrees uh, or settle cases. It just means as we do it, uh, we'll publish those settlements uh, up to 30 days for people to provide comment and interested parties that want to, uh, to be aware of that can be aware of it and participate as necessary. Yeah, well, Mr. Pruitt, I, no, I wasn't here during your opening statement, so uh, um, I, I missed it, but that was a very, that's a very good uh, explanation. Uh, let me, in an interview with the National Review last month, you stated that we still have a lot of work to do on clean air, but that was uh, for the last decade. Uh, the EPA was so focused on CO2 that we've uh, let a lot of other things slide. From my view as chairman and ranking member of this committee for the Obama administration, 
I agree with you that his singular focus on regulating a naturally occurring gas as a pollutant came at a heavy cost. And now that you've been administrator for nearly a year, what areas of environmental protection were neglected by the previous administration? Do you have any come to your mind? Like, well, on the you know, attainment issue specifically, I mean, we still have 40 percent roughly of our country that live in areas that don't meet their quality standards, about 120 million people. And I think as I look at the investment, for instance, counties that are making decisions, collecting data, a lot of times we're using model data as opposed to monitor data. Uh, and that's primarily for a cost issue. And so I think as we talk about the budget uh, through our, uh, this process, I think it's important to maybe look at ways that we can help states and counties uh, put more monitors in place to get real-time data. Uh, to ensure that we're making real-time decisions on air quality. That's something I would love to work with Congress uh, to achieve. Yeah, yeah. Well, right now I'm chairing the Senate Armed Services Committee. I'm going to have to get back to that, but I uh, appreciate the fact that you're here. But why in the world did you agree to two and a half hours? Well, that's an end point, but possibly <laughs> we'll be done before that, Senator Inhofe. So, but thank you. If you have a chance to come back from uh, Senator, you used to, you used to blame here. Ryan Jackson for a few things. I'll do the same. <laughs> <laughs> Senator